Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. On today's show, I'll be speaking with our state representative, Holly Rashine. I'll also be talking at the end of the show with local author Rodney Ross. But first, I'm going to talk with a native here of Key West, and he's going to share his inspirational true story with us this morning. Now, as you know, in an instant, your life can change, and you can end up on the last place on earth that you would ever imagine. That's what happened to my guest this morning. Now he had his whole life ahead of him. He was just beginning his career as a professional baseball player and then suddenly his life took an unexpected turn. David Biro is gonna share all the details with us this morning. David, thank you so thank you. much for thank being you. here. Now, David, let's take it back to your professional career as a baseball player mm -hmm. when suddenly your career ended and that was the last thing that you ever expected. Well, ever since the age of seven uh, and I first started playing baseball, I was always inspired to be a major league ball player. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all I ever had in mind. And uh, when, I, when I turned 17 and I graduated from high school, I signed a contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers and I became uh, one of the top prospects in the organization. Uh, I went to spring training. I, I had a good spring training. I played two and a half years, and on the third year, I ended up hurting my arm. Mm -hmm. uh, when I hurt my arm, and they told me that I either had to get surgery and or go home, and I told them I refused the surgery because I couldn't afford to pay for it. When I left, when I left Vero Beach, which was Dodger Town, mm -hmm. uh, I felt like my whole life fell apart. I mean, what was I going to do? The only thing I ever knew was to play baseball, and I just didn't know what I was going to do. Well, when I come back to Key West, I was able to get into the fire department, uh, the Key West Fire Department. I was in the Key West Fire Department for maybe five or six years, and uh, I got married, and all that still wasn't, didn't make me happy. There was something in my life that was a void. I had a beautiful, uh, two beautiful kids. My wife was my best friend, and um, but once I started using drugs, everything just started to collapse. Now, David, would you say that you started using those drugs then, right then, because you were just so empty and, and lost that you felt that that was what was going to fill you up? Well, I've heard this term a lot in, about, I used to hear people said that they ran to drugs because it was like having a best friend. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a way to, uh, to deal with the pain that they were going with it. I, f I always felt like a, a failure, you know. I felt like a failure because I was always, since I was seven years old, I mean, I was always all-star, I was always honored, I was always talked about, uh, had albums of, of paper clippings that they did in the Key West Citizen. So then all of a sudden I lose what I worked for and it just, I just fell apart, you know. Uh, I got married real quickly, you know, um, and uh, it just didn't work out because I just didn't have my heart into it, you know. And when my kids came, I, was, I loved my kids. It was the best experience that I ever had, but it just was not fulfilling what I needed. In fact, when my son got older, he asked me one time, he said, Dad, I can't understand how you love drugs more than you love us. And I had to tell him, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what made it a little bit rough in our relationship. Mm -hmm. you know, he took that pretty too hot. You know? mm -hmm. Now, David, so you got into the drugs after your career as a fireman, or during yeah. your career, I should say, and, and then it just kept spiraling downhill right. from there. Right. I started out as a, 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 as a, I used to unload the boats back in the 70s and early 80s. They used to bring marijuana into the Keys, and I started out unloading it. Uh, I started, then I started getting more involved, uh, selling it myself. And uh, then I got busted up in uh, Hialeah. When I got busted in Hialeah is when my cocaine addiction started. You know, I had someone tell me I was getting ready for trial, and they told me, oh, David, do a little bit of powder. I didn't know anything about cocaine. And they said, do a little bit of powder. It'll settle your nerves. Well, it didn't sort of solve my nerves. It just, at that moment, I knew I was addicted to cocaine. Why? Because it kept my, it, my brain just opened up to all the things that were in my mind that happened to me in my life, you know, so. Well, that was one of the worst things then yeah. that they, they could have told you to take. So, David, you did end up in prison. Yeah, I ended, up, I ended up in prison um, three and a half years ago, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, 
I got into a, I got into a thing with, uh, I started becoming very addicted to pain medication. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a gentleman across from where I lived that had some pain medication that he used to borrow from me and then I would get back. Well, one day I just broke into his house. Mm -hmm. And um, I really didn't even know where I was at, to be honest with you. Uh, if, if anybody ever seen my mugshot, they could, you could see that I was a man lost. My face, it was just lost. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they, they arrested me for. Mm -hmm. But it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because yes. um, I went to prison, I got clean. I stayed clean in prison, which was a hard thing with there's so much drugs involved. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, uh, I got arrested on a Saturday. And on a Monday, I had planned on doing something that would have been very awful. Mm -hmm. And so I look at it as a blessing that, you know, that I did get arrested on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Because I probably would have never had, I probably would have lost my son, my daughter, and never seen my grandchildren for what I had planned that, for that Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so grateful I didn't. Well, you know. I am too. I'm grateful that you're here. And now, as you mentioned, David, prison actually was the best thing that happened to you. But then you did come back to Key West, and you did find yourself right. homeless on the streets. Yeah, I've been back about 30 months now. Mm -hmm. And when I came back, when I came to Key West, I didn't have no place to go. All I had was the prison clothes that they gave me, a shirt, pants, and shoes. And uh, I didn't have no place to go. I didn't bother to call anybody because all my old friends were still active in drug addiction. And I knew I didn't, I didn't want to be a part of that. So uh, what I did go, I went to FKOC, mm -hmm. had a meeting, and they told me that as soon as they had an opening that I could come in. Well, it took five weeks. But that was also a blessing because those five weeks, I stayed on the streets, I stayed at the meetings from uh, 8 o'clock to like 1 o'clock at the uh, Acres Away, which is NA and, uh, AA and NA, and um, it gave me a chance to really hear things that I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. and then about 1 o'clock, I would walk over to uh, St. Bede's, sit underneath the trees for about an hour, and just think about life and everything. I would see people go by that I knew, they would beep at me and stuff like that, and I would wave. Uh, and then I would go in at 4 o'clock, eat my supper, and then walk out to, to Cots. Uh, Cots was an experience, really bad, really experience. At, at, back at that time, it was a little bit out of hand. And I stayed out there five weeks. Mm -hmm. But I really knew I wanted my life to change. Mm -hmm. Or not, I wouldn't have stayed out there two days. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and during these last 30 months, uh, I've been able to get my family. I have uh, two daughters. I have a son. I have four grandsons. Uh, there was a six-year absence there that they had nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. um, I saw my one grandson who I hadn't seen when he was born. He was six years. He had just turned six years old and my daughter emailed me and told me, Dad, I think it's time that my son meets his grand so grandfather. That's wonderful. And they stayed here for two months after that, then they went to Japan. Mm -hmm. So it was like I got to see my you, grandson. You connected. Yeah. And David, I, I think what's so wonderful about your story is that this could happen to anyone, David. Yeah. But the thing is, rising above mm -hmm. what you have to go through, and you went through the worst. Yes. But you have risen above it, and now you're doing awesome. You're working yeah. for the Florida Keys Outreach Coalition. They love you over right. there. Right. And you just told me, too, David, that you are becoming very soon a counselor because you right. want to help other people right. who were in the same position that you were in, which is just yeah. awesome. Right now, I'm the uh, monitor. I just moved to the NICE, which is the beginning phase of the program. That's where I always wanted to be mm -hmm. because that's when we get young, young guys. I call them kids, and uh, coming out of the jail, in Monroe County Jail, and we have a lot of people that come from up north, and they come over there, and they come there, to be honest with you, with no hope. Mm -hmm. They come there with one set of clothes, and FKOC provides clothing, uh, food. Uh, they provide everything that you need to get started, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and also they show a lot of affection. Um, they, in each section, they have phase one, two, and three, Everybody that works there, it's they compassionate, and uh, that's what a lot of us that have been homeless have never really had is compassion, either from our families because of what we've done, mm -hmm. or for like in uh, different cities, people just don't like homelessness. Right. They look at homelessness as uh, the worst it could be, right. but I always say you, anybody could be homeless, and you just one paycheck away. That's 
Very true, David. And I would invite anybody to come and see our facilities in Patterson Avenue mm -hmm. and out in uh, 16, 18, uh, Truesdale, out in Point Siena, mm -hmm. and you would not be amazed. You would be amazed that, you, that this is a homeless shelter. Yeah, it's absolutely, so. absolutely beautiful. And we're running out of time this morning. But, David, I look forward to talking more in the future mm -hmm. with you because you definitely have a purpose here, and that's, that's to be helping yes. others. And, and I, I thank you for sharing yes. your story with us this morning. I would like to show these pictures. I don't know if it's going to come out. We, yeah, I, I don't know if they can see it but these are photos of you signing with the Dodgers and we're going to leave you with that we're going to take a quick break okay. right now Thank but you. I'll be right back after these messages. Thank you David. Stay with me there's more to come.